you aren't growing Mizuna and Mibuna in your leafy green garden this year, you are missing out. These two leafy greens grow faster than just about every other more popular leafy green out there, and they are shockingly hardy. So much so that every year they are just about the most successful plant in our fall garden. Yep, they are just that prolific. And in their native regions of Kyoto and Mibu, they are prized for their versatility in the kitchen. You can and should put Mizuna and Mibuna in everything from salads to stir fries to soups. So the question is, why isn't everyone growing these two plants? Maybe it's their characteristic peppery kick from their mustard seed origins, or, or, and I think this is the case, they just haven't caught on yet. And I think it's only a matter of time until they do. If that sounds interesting to you, join me as we plant our own Mizuna and Mibuna and learn how to add it into your leafy green garden this year. Now, to keep things simple, I'm only gonna refer to Mizuna from here out as they do have very similar growing needs, but just know I mean both. It is often said that Mizuna is both heat tolerant and cold tolerant, and that's true relative to our garden drama queens like lettuce and spinach. But it will still bolt when temperatures soar into the 90s Fahrenheit, and it only grows very slowly or even not at all as temperatures cool down near freezing. It grows best and most vigorously when the temperatures range from 45 Fahrenheit to about 70 Fahrenheit, but it will tolerate light freezes and heat waves into the 80s so just time your planting accordingly. In our garden, we really like to think of it as a shoulder season crop. It thrives throughout fall and from mid spring to early summer. When choosing a location, keep in mind that Mizuna really prefers to grow in sunny spots and it's less tolerant of partial shade than the true spinaches and lettuces out there. This patch of red streak Mizuna at the end of our row isn't getting a whole lot of sun and the plants are only about 25% of the size of those in the full sun. So they're really, really stunted. Mizuna grows terrifically when sown directly into the soil or into seedling trays for transplant. We've done both many, many times. In fact, this is really one of the easiest plants to germinate and the vast majority of your seeds are gonna successfully sprout. So just feel free to plant them however you prefer. In the fall, I prefer to direct sow our seeds into the prepared rows after temperatures stop rising above 80 Fahrenheit. And in the spring, I like to start them in trays indoors a few weeks after the last frost to get a nice head start on the season. Plant the seeds about a quarter inch deep and expect a terrific germination rate in under a week, so long as temperatures are above 50 Fahrenheit. In terms of soil composition, Mizuna will tolerate even really bad soil like our native clay, but it's gonna reward you with unbelievable growth if you can give it rich soil and plenty of moisture. This year we planted ours in a deep compost mulch amended lightly with organic veggie fertilizer and you can see it is absolutely loving it. Mizuna, like lettuce, wants to grow in dirt that holds on to lots and lots of water. So if you have sandy, fast draining soil, make sure to amend it with compost or peat moss to help it hold on to that moisture. These plants germinate fast and they germinate easy, which is why as the seedlings begin to pop up, you'll need to either cull the extras or transplant any seedlings that are close together as Mizuna has a tendency to grow leggy and kind of weak when it's overcrowded. It also tends to fill every inch of available space, so I like to give ours about four to six inches of room between plants. Although honestly, most Mizuna growers go with more like eight or 10 inches. Mibuna is a little less bushy, so you can plant it more densely. In terms of care, it's a very easy going plant. Just keep the soil moist. It grows so fast, there's really no need to fertilize again before harvesting. If you live somewhere with a short fall season, try adding a protective row cover to trap the warmth down near the plants in the soil. Both Mizuna and Mibuna suffer from very few disease issues, and Mizuna tends not to be a pest favorite. Most insects are gonna to prefer to eat something else in your garden. Mibuna, on the other hand, unfortunately, is often attacked and stripped down to the stem of all foliage. You can, of course, spray against flea beetles and brassica murdering caterpillars that love to eat Mibuna, but we don't bother. Instead, we just grow extras. It is so easy and fast to grow, we let the insects take their portion without a fight. A quick interruption and a quick request. If you are enjoying this video, please consider liking it or subscribing to the channel if this is your kind of jam. We really, really appreciate it. It really helps us out. Thank you very much. And let's get back to the Mizuna talk. 
For a quick win, try harvesting some of your Mibuna greens after just 20 days as baby greens. At this point, the leaves are more spinachy and they have less of that mustardy kick to them. And after 40 days, both Mizuna and Mibuna are gonna be ready to harvest. One of the very best parts of growing these plants is they do a great job of replacing lost leaves, making them a perfect candidate for cut and come again style harvesting. Just take off the larger outer leaves as needed and come back in a couple days to a week for more. After a big harvest though, they do appreciate a light feeding to help replace that lost foliage and nitrogen. I personally like to eat them best as a salad base, but if you harvest your leaves and you find that they're too mustardy for you, don't panic. They make really awesome stir fry ingredients. And when cooked, that spiciness really mellows out beautifully. We're adding them to an eggplant tofu dish tonight alongside some tot soy and Tokyo Bacano cabbage.